please stand to your feet for the respect and the reading of the word of God. Job chapter 22 verse 28 but we're going to commence reading from verse 21. Father now as we come into your presence we pray that your spirit that is the searcher of man's heart we know and believe and trust that your spirit is not just in this place but he's present in each of us as believers therefore God you have established your word and your covenant and your promises in our heart and therefore we believe God according to what your word has said now father we pray as we give ourselves unto you may your spirit not only speak to us but may your spirit have your way in us we bring every thing that may be a distraction to your word under the power and anointing of Jesus Christ that the enemy will not steal your word from us but it will be planted in our hearts in Jesus name and all the church happily said Amen. happily said Amen. happily said Amen. man you may be seated God bless you Listen, I want to drop this word to you, so I hope you get it. When you get it, make sure you get it in there and keep it watered with faith. Remember last week we talked about that God has assigned you a pastor and God is attaching people. He's connecting people and every pastor that is listening, I want you to understand, is that we carry seasons. We carry seasons. It is very important that we understand what God is doing and what God is saying because if we are distracted by life, then it is not beneficial to the people because the people miss out on the seasons. Remember last week I told you is that when God created Adam, everything that man needed, God placed it on the inside of Adam. God did not have to go to the tree or to the ground to create him a suitable mate. God went inside of him. In God's body, the kingdom of God, everything that you need, God has it inside of his body. The body is the body of Christ. We represent the body of Christ and Christ is the head. So everything that you need or desire is within the body of Christ. That's why he said that these signs shall follow them that believe. Everything is inside. God never has to go outside of his body to bless you, to heal you, or deliver you. Everything that is needed is on the inside of God's body. That's why Jesus said, do not seek after these materialistic things as the Gentiles do, but seek ye first what? The kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And then he says, whatever these things that you need, he said, it shall be added unto you. So everything that you need is in the body. You don't have to go outside to the psychics, to the, to the ones who do the, the, the zodiac signs and all of that. It's on the inside of his body. That's why it's very important that pastors understand. We, in this hour, we cannot be afraid to speak the truth to God's people. You cannot. You have to tell them the truth because it is the truth that will make you free. Amen. Here's another thing I want to tell you before we read the scripture. Quit apologizing for being blessed. Amen. Tell three people it's okay to be blessed. See, if as long as pastors, <clears throat> as we keep teaching people to be a good Christian is to be broke, is to be poor, then you're going to always have those problems. That is not God's word. That, that's not in God's word. God's word says that he rejoices in the prosperity, the increase. So not just in materialistic things, but your soul and your spirit and wisdom and knowledge. Remember, grandma taught us a fool is a fool, whether if he got money or he broke. If he got a pocket full of money, he's just a fool with a lot of money. But a fool with a lot of money don't know what to do. Even Jesus told his disciples, and I'm already preaching, y'all. I need to stop. Jesus told his disciples this. This. He say, look, you know what? Y'all need to go back to the city and you need to talk to the people at the city is because they are more wiser about money matters than the children of light. So it's a shame when the folks in the world is more wiser about money than the folks in the kingdom. So we have to become more wiser and understand. Amen. 
So I, I tell people this, God wants us to have nice things. In fact, when he brought Israel out of slavery, go back and read the text. The Bible said he gave them silver and gold. God is a provider. See, here's the problem is that God don't have a problem with blessing people. People just have a problem with believing that God can do it. Is because what you really want is above what you can afford or what you can have. So therefore, you think that you are not privy to it. But there's another part you need to understand. There is a God that owns everything. Heaven and earth, the hills, the cattle. So if, if, if it belongs to him and you as children, the Bible say we're heirs and joint heirs. Most people narrow that down only to salvation. How can I be an heir to salvation and a joint heir to salvation? salvation I'm saved because I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior so now we have to understand that God is a provider amen, amen. even even Paul told the people when they was taking care of Paul he, the Philippian church he said you know what my God shall supply how much all. no how much no, no it don't say that it don't say all y'all need to go back and read the text no it don't say all he said that he will provide you with some bologna and bread and a little water and you need to be happy y'all show it says all y'all may need to go back and read that because maybe you read that in Jet and Ebony I told y'all put them books down and get the Bible because the Bible says he would do what all all means everything so we have to take our limits off God, amen? amen. I mean, if, 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 if God can provide Israel with food, he say, you know what? They say, wait, is this all God can give us? It's just these morning cakes and, and bread. We need some meat. God said, okay. So he start dropping meat and say, you don't have to harvest anything. Just eat till you get full. Don't worry about the rest gone. I'm a provider. So therefore, why do you think Abraham, when he had that experience with God, he called that experience moment, that experimental moment. He say, I'm going to call it Jehovah Jireh because God is a provider. So if God is your Jehovah Jireh, you ought to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Now, I want you to say this word and it's going to be crucial, but look at three people and say, shut up. Now say it like you really mean it. Shut up. Scream it, they can't hear you. And I'll tell you the reason why in a minute. So Job chapter 22, we're going to commence reading from verse 21. A quaint, now this is Job friends talking to him. See, you, you need to, see, listen, listen. Some of y'all, I'm going to say this again, some of y'all have friends that you don't need to have. Because some of y'all have friends that has been limiting you to what God really want to do. You know, so th those people are not good for you. Can I get an amen? amen? Come on, talk back to me. And, and most of the time they tell you that is because they want to keep you under them or keep you along with them. Because y'all know how we do. We don't like to see nobody doing better than we are. Oh, I know what they used to teach. They used to teach, oh, uh, don't try to be with the Joneses or keep up with the Joneses. You know what? Can I use one of y'all females, y'all little cliches y'all do? Come on, y'all know how y'all do that? Come on, snap them fingers. You know what? Let me tell you something. See, I'm not that good. Y'all do that. Listen, let, let me tell you something. I don't mind keeping up with the Joneses because I'm trying to see what in the heck that they doing that's making it work for them. Because everything I tried ain't working. So I need to find out what they're doing. And long as it's legal, then I need to know. Can I get an amen? amen? See, I'm going to tell you something. See, you're only going to hear a message like this from somebody who has been broke. Somebody whose dinner was grits and salt Joe Bacon. Some of y'all don't know about that. It ain't that salty when you boil it and then fry it. Pig feet, hog moths, chitlins, all of that kind of stuff, you know. Money sandwiches with sugar on it. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Just when you become old and you say, I can't handle that no more. I know it's got to be better. But it's one thing I won't give up. I'm not giving up my spam. A little spam fried on some bread is good. Okay, now what, look what Job friends, and, and let me tell you something. You have to read 
and understand the text, God got mad at Job's friends because Job was a good man. Now look what he says. He says, acquaint in verse 21, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thy heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then shall thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophrim as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver. For then shall thou have thy delight in the Lord and shall lift up thy face unto God. Now just Job friend telling him how he's going to be blessed if he do something. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, verse 27, and he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Now, let's look at this text more closely, because what we're talking about this morning, we're simply saying, uh, give me my title up there real quick, and I want everybody to say it with me. Shut up. You're complaining and what? Oh, come on, I don't hear y'all. Say it. See, I don't hear everybody. See, that's why I told you earlier to tell somebody to shut up. It's time for us to shut up with all that complaining and start decreeing. Look what he said here. He said that if you start decreeing a thing in verse 28, thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be what? Established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon you. So you, you need to decree something it shall be established unto you. But we complain a lot. We complain. I got a headache. I'm Shut up. I don't feel good. Shut up. Come on, I'll say it and y'all help me out with shut up. I'm broke. Shut up. I'm lonely. Shut up. I'm sad. Shut up. People talking about me. Shut up. They don't like me. Shut up. Uh, now y'all got to say it like you are just, it's annoying to you. Uh, y'all don't know what they did to me. I better stop because I know the saints will start thinking and have a backlash and something else going to come out with that shut up. So I better stop, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I better, yeah, yeah, I better stop, yeah. I'm saved and sanctified, but I know how it is when you get a, you know, just, uh, you know. Yeah, now we be nice with it. Shut up. Up. Come on, we already know what you're thinking. So start decreeing a thing. If you, if you, listen, if you decree it, the Bible says it shall be established. But here's what you got to do to your decreeing. You have to believe. Yeah. When you decree it, you have to believe. Other than that, you're just wasting your time speaking words. See? You just waste your time speaking words. So you have to decree it. Thou shall also decree a thing. So what happened? Isba did, did not accuse Job in order to upset him. But he wanted to help Job. And sometimes your friends are good. They want to help you. They just don't understand. You know, so he wanted to help Job. Uh, so Isba hoped that Job would confess his evil deeds to God. Then God would forgive Job and Job would have a successful life. But Isba was still wrong. He was wrong. Job was an innocent man. Amen. And Job already was a true servant of God. In verse 24 and 25, these are good words that Isbah realized that real success is not money. Nobody should trust their wealth. We should trust God. And Isbah emphasized his ideals with humor. Men used to find gold in the rocks. In Job 8 and 6, Job 28 and 10. So Isbah told Job that his gold belonged in the rocks. And Job should return his goal and trust God instead. Now look, y'all. I know y'all have friends. We all have friends and family like that. You get, you get, you get about five dollars more than them in the bank, and the first thing gonna say, oh, she thinks she's somebody, or he thinks he missed a big shot. 
you know, because he, he trusts in his money. He don't trust in, who said I have to be broke to trust God? Why can't he have money and trust God? Why can't he have the finer of things and trust God? See, the problem of it is your friends trust themselves and not God. When you trust God and take your limits out for God, then everything is unlimited to you. Amen? If you believe that, give God some praise. They think they something because they got a house. That you can have a house. Just got rid of, and, and let me tell you something. Some friends you don't have to get rid of. They're going to leave anyway. Because jealousy going to make them leave. And then they're going to go out and spread your name. And that's why you need to shut up. Don't try to defend it. Let them talk. Let them talk. Let them talk. Amen. Tell somebody, let them talk. See, it's time out for the saints. You got the sinners boasting and bragging what they have. And then you got the saints been shut down by their leaders saying, be quiet. You can't tell everybody it is. You can't do that. Oh, look at here. We don't have a $5 in the offering basket, but look at the car lot out there. It's $3 million. Shut up. Start decreeing more money coming to the kingdom. Because look, when you are assigned by God to do something, you don't have to talk that kind of stuff. Why? God going to provide for the vision. Oh, I'm helping. I'm helping. Let me help. I'm helping somebody. May not be in here, but somebody watching being helped right now. Pastors, you don't have to beg for a dime. You don't have to get up with all that crook, crook stuff. Leave that alone. Trust God. Bring the season. Bring the people into the season. And God will provide everything else. Amen? Amen. He'll do it. He'll do, I get excited when I walk out in the parking lot. Why? I remember what the parking lot used to look like. Yeah. Yeah. You know, them vehicles, when you crank them up, it'll kill off a neighborhood of mosquitoes. Yeah, some of y'all drove them. Some of y'all, now, now look at them, Pastor Smith, they trying to look ashamed now, like, he ain't talking to me. I, now, now, yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, we have old pictures. I even had, we even had, had a Lincoln that the airbags went out and we was like coming up to her. And that's why we got to church and everybody thought we was happy and shouting. We just had that after effect like jet lag. I have to apologize to my wife after all them years. Sweetie, I'm sorry. Because after, after it went down on and I drove, I said, you drive mine, so I drive yours. I drove it one day to work, Brother Larry. I, uh -uh. She got to get back in this tomorrow. <laughs> so you have to understand. You have to understand what God is doing. But we have to be able to decree it. You open your mouth. The Bible say that the, the power of life and death is where? So you have what you've been saying. I'm so broke I can't pay attention. That's why you're broke. That's why you ain't paying attention. You have to watch it. You have to decree it. Amen? Amen. You have to be able to say it. So now after Job, friend, Job wished that God did not watch him in Job 7 and 18. But Job hoped for the day when he could speak with God in Job chapter 14 and ver uh, verse 15. So Isabel promised a good life to Job if only Job would confess his evil deeds. And Isabel's advice would be good advice if Job were an evil man. However, Job was a good man. Job already trusted God. And then we look at verse 29 and 30 and Isabel's word were sensed, but they had a meaning that Ispa did not expect. Job was already a good man in Job 1 and 8, and Job's prayers mattered to God in Job chapter 40, verses 1 through 5. And although Job did not yet realize this, in fact, Job's troubles would end when Job prayed for his friends. So you need to pray for your friends. A lot of people don't have husbands no more because they listen to their friends. A lot of people don't have wives no more because they listen to their friends. You have to understand. God told the three friends that he was angry about their unfair words. God told them to ask Job to pray for them. And God forgave them when Job prayed because God forgave them because Job was a true servant of God. So you need to pray for your friends. A lot of them, the friends will mess you up. 
because you trust your friends and you, 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 you say, well, you know, they've been my friend, you know, my best friend since elementary school and they're not going to tell me nothing wrong. They are not. Sometimes your friends can be doing good and you can be doing bad. And, and look, because this is, this is some, of, some, some, some of y'all. Your friends are doing bad and the only advice you give them is good advice, but you don't give them the whole story. You always say, uh, you always say, well, Mary, baby, just keep praying and trusting God. Pray about it. It's going to be all right. Oh, baby, don't worry. Wipe your tears. The Bible say that weeping men do it for a night, but joy. All of that is God's word, and it sounds good, but you need to understand. To, girl, look, shut up. You know how grandma used to do when you get to crying, and you be trying to get it out. I, first thing mama and them say, shut up. And as soon as they can get you to shut up, then they can get some sense out of you. Now, open your mouth and tell me, what's wrong that's what i'm telling you this morning shut up stop all your whining and open your mouth and tell god now watch this watch this watch this i'm gonna mess with some of your minds now you know the bible say why do you say bishop shut up and quit complaining and quit murmuring about stuff you know what the bible say god hates a murmurer and a complainer because he empowered you with himself to speak to change your season. And you sitting around like you're in a welfare line waiting on everybody to help you out. You better help yourself. Y'all yeah. remember what grandma said? God blessed the child with his own. You better open up your mouth. The Bible said if any of you afflicted, let him pray. And if you're sick, call for the elders. You better start opening up your mouth and quit murmuring and complaining about my light bill due. I don't know how I'm going to get the money. Well, you tell me that, I'm going to say, well, just sit there. Here's a candle. Because they're getting ready to get cut off. Why? It's because you don't know how to open up your mouth. Quit complaining and start decreeing it. Oh, come here, Jesus. They need you this morning. Jesus saw that fig tree and he was hungry. But when he made it there, there was no figs. So he declared that that tree would be cursed and never again bear any figs. And it was so. And then the disciples looked like some of y'all. And they said, Woo, Jesus. It happened. It happened. He said, Look, shut up. He didn't actually say that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting that part. He said, Shut up. If you have the faith of the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain and tell the mountain to be moved hence over yonder and it shall be done. Somebody shout, it's time to start decreeing. See, not all that stuff. I know they taught you. Don't do that. Don't embarrass yourself going to the car lot, putting your hands on there saying, I lay hands, I claim this car. And you, well, I, I mean, wait, wait, wait. I, okay. Explain this to me like I'm a five-year-old child. They tell you to go there and lay your hands on it and say, this is my car, but you walk off from the dealership. I thought that was your car. Shouldn't you be driving out with it? No, no, no. See, see, look, look. See, this is what God would do. When you step in there and you know already decreed it, then God will get them to meet you right where you at and where you need to be. Uh, li li now, now listen, 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 get excited if you want to, but I'm not trying to tell you that to be excited. I'm telling you what your pastor have lived. Yeah. So you, you can't tell me that when you look and your wife say, I want a new car, what kind you want? A Lexus, then let's go where? To the Lexus dealer. Yeah. Yeah. And then you look at, you look at the sticker price of the car on the showroom floor and it says 42,000 we didn't put our heads down and say oh that's gonna be a lot of money well we want it but we don't like those wheels take them wheels off and these are the kind of wheels we want is that what you want baby yeah okay that's what she want okay all right well, well, well uh, and, and what can you do well let's see 42,000 okay I'll tell you what how about we sell it to you for 31,000 I have, I have a math teacher in here. Can y'all figure that out? 42,000, 31,000. I know if, I, if I'm correct, that's like $11,000 difference, right? I'm not that intelligent with math, but uh, you know, I, I think, is that 11? Can y'all check on your calculators? That's 11. Now, where, what dealership I said it was? Lexus, right? Okay, so now baby got what she want. Now it's time for daddy to get what he want. 
I want the Harley Davidson. Go to one car dealership. Oh, you can't, man, you can't afford this. Your credit won't let you get it. You need to look at the used cars, uh, used for it. Well, do you have a used Harley Davidson? No, you can't afford that. That was too much. You need to be down here. Well, I tell you what, I'll see you later because there is a dealership somewhere in Houston that God has already assigned to me. So what I did, I got in my car, drove back up 45 South, stopped out at Long Star Ford, walked in there. God already had people waiting on you. Here come a salesman walking and say, what you need? I like, I want a Harley Davidson 2002. That was the year. I'll never forget it. He said, okay, well, you consider this one? I love that one sitting where? On the showroom floor. Now, we just left the Lexus dealer on the showroom floor. Here's a time later. Now, I'm getting ready to get mine. It's sitting up there. Sticker price, 48000 did I cry? No. I say, you know what? Yeah, I like that one, but here's the deal. He say, if, if I give, if I can get you in this truck, will you leave with it today? Yes, I will. Only if, number one, I'm not trading in my vehicle. Number two, I'm only going to give you $3,000 down. If you can make that happen, we can deal. If not, then I'll proceed on. He goes and get the manager. See, God know how to set you up. He had to get somebody in higher authority. Then the manager step up and say, you like this truck, Mr. Baines? Yes, I do. He say, what will it take for you to drive it off? I say, well, you make it right and I'll drive it off. He say, now, now some of y'all ain't going to get this. Y'all got it. I know some of y'all, some of y'all may be a little slow, but I'm, I'm going to slow it down. So he said, how about 31,000? See right there, somebody should have shouted. See, y'all, y'all missed it. 42,000 at a Lexus for 31,000, 48,000 at a Ford dealership, 31,000, both off the showroom floor, both on our, don't tell me what God will not do for you. If you declare it, you can, Jesus say you can have whatever you say. You have not because you ask not. And if you believe what you say, you shall receive what you ask for. Do I have a witness? But we, we got some bad people here. I, I, look, we don't have 5,000 members, but guess what? I'll take some bad folks who not a walk in the word of God and declare over 5,000 headaches in it. Look, we got folks, I ain't going to call no name. We got folks can stand up, showing me up. I'm like, I'm behind. We got folks standing up there talking on the porch. Hey, Bishop, how are things going? You know, you know, just check this out. Room, you know. And I was like, how did you do that? Where was the remote? Oh, we do it on the cell phone. I said, well, hi, dog. I can't even do that. It may be time for me to upgrade. Crank, start and stop vehicles with cell phones now. My God. See, see, look, God don't stop anything because we don't want it. Technology keep moving. Let, let, me, let me get to this, y'all. I, let, let, I don't have but 10 minutes and we going. So everybody shout the crib. Shout it again, decree it. Tell somebody, shut up. Shut up. Nobody want to hear all that complaining. Decree it. That's what it's all about. Even when I'm fishing, if I ain't catching the right size fish, I say, now Jesus, come on now. You told Peter to, to cast on the other side. Obviously, I can't cast on the other side. Fish, come on in the name of Jesus. See, they don't know what I be doing. I, I be talking to God because I don't have to say it out loud. I be, and then here they come, racking in, racking in, you know, racking in, racking in. First thing I start looking, we, we, went, we went fishing here not long ago. We were just catching them small ones. I was like, come on, Jesus. I know some big fish in here. Come on, get on this line. Get on this line. And then all of a sudden, it started affecting everybody got happy. You know what? God is good. You have to learn to decree because he gave you authority. Tell somebody, shout and say, you can't tell me what God won't do. Everybody getting promoted but me. Well, maybe they connected to God. You need to decree, shut up complaining and decree it. And say, this is mine. But you better say, God, give me the wisdom and the knowledge to be this, to be that, to do it this way, to bless your kingdom and all of that. Because it all started with God first. So, thou, in Job 22 and 28, he said, thou shalt declare, declare the creed of thee, and it shall be established unto do. Look, giving the deposit of God in your life to live life 
to the fullest. And therefore, you must make use of all the deposits of God in your life. God invested in you. Use it all for the benefit of God. You know what? I don't have time to be upset or angry. I don't have time to deal with foolishness. I don't have time to argue with senseless arguments. I don't have time for that. Why? It's because I'm too busy decreeing the blessings in my life. I dreamed the other night, a few weeks ago, man, I dreamed I hit the big one. I had to say it like that because we know some folks are sanctified, Crystal, and they may throw a theological rock up here and tell me I'm going to hell, but I don't care because I know I ain't going to hell. I'm a, I dream I won the lottery. And, and you know what? In, in that dream, I won the lottery. It was like over a hundred million dollars. And I didn't say nothing to nobody. I just waited that Sunday and saw who showed up the church. And I say, these are the ones. And then I became like Oprah Winfrey. You going to be a millionaire. You going to be. A... And I started writing out checks. And look, 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 look. Now, I'm not going to say I'm crazy enough to believe that because you know what crazy means you're out of your mind. I, you know, no, 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 no. I hear people say, give God a crazy praise. No, 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 no. Don't, don't speak that here. You give God a dignified praise. You give God a mighty praise. And you know what? No, no, we ain't thinking crazy. You just thinking kingdom minded. That's all it is. Don't tell me what God can't do. If not, then I'm look, I will stop hanging out with you in a minute. And I'll start hanging out because I have some friends. And I have rich friends in high places. Oh, y'all want to know who they are, huh? I tell you who they are. I tell you who they are. Look, Solomon is one of my good friends. You know? Yeah, I just sit down there and talk with him. And he said, you know, Baines, I didn't ask God for all them concubines and all of that. I just told God to give me wisdom why I can just judge his people. And along with all that, look what God blessed me with. Now, listen, y'all say, now, wait a minute, Bishop, you losing my Solomon been dead. Jesus said, I come in the volume of the book. So as long as I'm reading the book, then Solomon is in reality to me because God is letting me see what and how he did with Solomon. Do I have a witness? And it is written for our example. You learn how to approach God. Here, here's another one of my friends, Jabez. He said, you know what, God, if thou will increase my territory. And so I find myself praying like that because, you know, I'm like, you know, man, I want a ranch. You know, I need about a 10, 15, 20 acre ranch. You know, I, uh, why, why not 50? Because I don't have time to be mowing that. Just about 10 acres or 12 acres or something like that. You know, where I could put my own lake on it. And I could, see, see, listen, you need to change the way you think. So a man thinking, so is he. If you think that you are poor, then you're poor. You're going to have the attitude. You have money in your pocket, but then acting like a poor person. $100 in your pocket, and you won't even buy yourself a water burger with cheese without the onions. Y'all got that? Because you thinking that you're going to be too broke. And you worrying about tomorrow. Look what God say. He said, don't you worry about tomorrow. Don't even worry about what you're going to wear. Tomorrow have its own problems. God wants us to live now. So I find myself praying, Lord, give us this day our daily bread as you promised us. You know, I'm not worried about tomorrow because why? God has already spoke to my tomorrow as long as I'm alive. He has already told my tomorrow to accommodate me. So I know some of y'all brilliant minds saying, okay, well, if that's all possible, Bishop, then why all this hot weather? Again, God already told tomorrow it's going to be hot, the sun go shine, but at a certain place, wherever Bishop be, you make sure if it's not air conditioned, it's some shade there. And all I have to do is walk in the shade, uh, uh, Brother Kenner caught on to it, and then God will send that breeze. When I talked to him the other day, I said, man, be careful in this heat. He said, Pastor Baines, it's more than me working out here. I'm like, boy, if this boy ain't my son in the Lord, he says, more than me. He said, people can't see them, but it's more than me out here. I'm like, see, people hear that kind of talk, Brother Kenner, they think you're crazy. But see, you got to understand, Elijah wasn't crazy. Elijah just could not see what Elijah just saw.
because Elijah saw things in the natural and the spiritual. So he say every now and then when it's a little hot and I say Lord and then God is just in a cool breeze. And then he said I'll just look up and say thank you Lord. Now watch what happens. See y'all didn't see the yard. He cut the yard. And then because he's such a perfectionist, he gets out there with a rake. He rake it all up in piles. And I said, well, brother, can I am here with the trailer man to help you out? Throw that stuff up on the trailer and I pull it back there. He just went to, see, I know him. When he go to stand off into the zone, it's like, man, you talking, you talking crazy right now. You, 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 you don't sound like my pastor. And I say, well, okay, you know what? I, I tell you what, brother, you just go and do it your way. I just don't want you to pass out drink water. He said, I have water. He said, but Pastor Baines, like I told Deacon Joe, it's more than me out here. And God just helps me. Now, if you go out there and look, and I'm not talking about in one place. I'm talking about everywhere you see cut. He raked up all the grain. And you see the evidence of it out there in the woods all by itself. So God would do that. You have to decree it. Don't you know they change seasons? Elijah say, you know what, God? Open up this lad's eyes so he can see what I see. Then he looked and say, it's not going to rain for three years and six months. Then he called fire down from heaven. So we have the ability and the power to decree a thing and it shall be done. If you believe it, it shall be done. Now look, look. Don't you go decreeing that people drop dead now. No, 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 I got to say that. So you, you decree, if your enemies mess with you, the Bible say you bless them. You bless them. You be nice to them. Because niceness overtakes everything. So from the earnest expectation, you know what, I'm done. That's enough, I'm done. I, I, don't, I don't need to go no further. Because I want you all to start decreeing. See, see, and, and some, of the, some of the preachers and pastors need to learn that too. Is that when they go to feeling good, they don't know how to cut it or loose. Shut up, sit down, let the Holy Spirit do the rest. Seeds been dropped. So you need to just stand to your feet right now. And you need to learn to declare, declare a thing. So I want you to think about what's going on in your life. And you need to start declaring it. What that song they sing, that song that's saying that, that, that he's working it out. What's that song they sing, that, that he's working it How'd that go? Yeah, that's it. Come on, get, get the microphone. Get the microphone. You got to know how to de decree it. And it's your, see, the only people going to tell you that not to decree something is those who don't know how to decree. And when you make your, when you make your right connection, that's what I'm telling people. No, it, it's not about, when I say make your connection to me as a pastor, it's not no pedestal for me. It's for your benefit. Paul told the people, he said, look, not that I'm in need or in want, but it's that you may have fruit in your account. I'm going to tell you something. Look, this, this is, this, look, look. I'm not going to say this is your season because the Bible teaches, as I told y'all last week, pastors is pastors of seasons that God brings. And the seasons are for you. When you make your connection, watch this, when you make your connection, you can't help but to do good. Anything that I heard somebody say this and I'm going to say it now. Anything, anybody that's connected to me can't help but to prosper. Anybody that's connected to me can't help but to do good. Anybody that's connected to me will not die before your time. Am I lying, Brother, brother Clifford? Uh, it, several times, y'all don't know, he was there. All it took was just a call. Sometimes not even a call, not even a visit. Sometimes the most powerful thing is when your pastor go to God, he don't have to be there. But you just have to believe. When you make that connection, God will do it. God will do it. And, 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 and sometimes you don't have to ask the pastor nothing. Just being connected. Why? What does that mean? God said, I'll give you pastors according to my heart. And they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. To be connected to the pastor is to be connected with God. Amen? Amen. That's Bible. And then it happens because the pastor brings the season. And you have to be ready for the season. You have to be ready on all accounts. If God moved me from here to Chicago, whatever pastor take this place, then he needs to understand. They need to understand what God is doing. And it's more than just getting up there, exciting people and giving a good word. You have to teach people how to decree in God's word what God can do for you. 
God is a healer. Don't tell me because he have done it. He have done it. He have healed cancer. He have healed, healed AIDS. And I'm not talking about the reports you see on TV. He have done it right through heart of faith. So God can do it. God can do it. Don't tell me what God cannot do. Don't tell me. Man. Oh, go ahead. Sing. I'll be talking. Just sing. I have what I decree. Then we'll give you an opportunity to come. Yes.